What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here. What I've got for your face balls today is one that I am super pumped about. I'm really excited to check this knife out because it is rocking a brand, well, a very old steel. However, a brand new steel for me. And if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a knife steel nerd through and through. I love the metallurgy and, uh, yeah, so I'm super pumped to get my hands on this thing. It's one of the only knives that I know about made in this steel. I'm sure there have been some others because this isn't a very new steel. It's actually uh, go, dates back to 1975. Uh, and just to put that into perspective, uh, powder, metal, powder metallurgy, if I can talk, <clears throat> was developed by Crucible back in 1970. So shortly after they started with powder metallurgy, uh, this steel was produced, and this particular steel that we're talking about is called ASP60. It's also known as, for a couple of different names, uh, ASP2060, and that is made by Era Steel, uh, as well as Vanadis60, which is a Bowler Udelholm uh, steel. But we're talking about ASP60. This is made by ASAB. A Swedish company and it is rocking on this Max Ace Killer Whale. So ASP60 is a really interesting steel. We're going to get into it here in just a little bit. But first and foremost, we're checking out the Killer Whale. It's a beautiful knife, good size knife from Max Ace. And this is it right here. So we've got a titanium frame lock, titanium almost full backspacer. We do have a lanyard point uh, right back here. We've got a black uh, pocket clip to match the backspacer. It is a uh, frame lock, does have an external relief cut, although they did it right. I mean, I would have rather it been an internal relief cut. However, leaving those uh, little bridges in there certainly uh, keeps that from getting caught up on your pocket, which is nice. We've got some really nice kind of micro milling lines that are consistent on both sides. We've just got a really monochromatic uh, show side scale here, <clears throat> matches the hardware. I don't think the hardware is titanium, or at least, I don't know, the pivot screw might be. I'm pretty confident this back screw is not. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a pretty straightforward flipper frame lock, but it is rocking ASP60. And like I said, we're gonna get into this steel and everything that it offers. I'm gonna tear this knife apart in this video and uh, we're gonna get her tuned up. We're gonna put some salve in it and I'm uh, gonna do some testing. I'm not gonna do the testing in this video. This is more just a, a kind of in-depth look at the knife itself. You know, and it's pretty straightforward. So, I mean, the thing's super comfortable in hand. We do have some jimping up here on this thumb landing pad. It works perfectly. And then we've got a couple of uh, poons up here on the blade, which you know I love as well as the swedge across the spine. The primary grind on this knife is fantastic. And I'm already realizing that I didn't bring a scale out here, so I'm gonna need to go and get that. But let's get a few dimensions on this thing real quick. So we've got an overall handle length of just over five inches, 5.1 inches. Blade length on this guy, I think we're talking four inches of ASP60 here, but let's just over 4.01 uh, and blade stock thickness. Let's see what we're working with here. 157 thousandths and we're probably somewhere around the 15 thousandths behind the edge, maybe. Yeah, 16 thousandths behind the edge. So very nice primary grind, uh, you know, very thin behind the edge for a blade like this and definitely riding on bearings. Uh, what you get, oh, one more measurement I should probably give you is thickness. So 0.547, so just over a half of an inch thick. What you get uh, with this setup is this box right here. This is a collaboration from Max Ace Knives and Midnight Cat Studios. This is the pouch that you get right here. Pretty standard zipper pouch. You get a cleaning cloth. You get extra hardware, which is fantastic. So you get a pivot screw. 
you get a, a lock bar insert uh, and then all the other screws so you get uh, there must be two clip screws underneath here we've got two tiny screws and then the two body screws one from either side so very very uh, minimal construction here just about dropped it just two screw construction which i love to see you know keep it simple and then we got some poison for the trolls uh, and you know just a nice uh, decent pouch for the knife but that's what we're looking at so just over four inches of blade here on the killer whale let me go grab a scale real quick and we'll see what see what she weighs all right i'm back in with the scale so this just over four inch blade and it weighs 5.424 ounces so just shy of five and a half ounces which i think is respectable for what this is we've got some fairly uh, beefy titanium scales here on both sides but you know it's a good size knife and you guys know that i like large knives you know this thing fits my hand extremely well it's extremely comfortable this does come in a few different flavors i think you can get black scales um, and you can get it with either this black washed blade or uh, i don't i don't know if it's uh, tumbled or or just like a bead blast or a satin finish i don't know what finish is on the blade but but you can get a raw blade instead of a coated blade. All right, so I'm gonna start opening this guy up. It appears, yeah, okay. So it's T10 on the pivot screw. And then I'm pretty confident that the body screws are a T8. Let me verify that really quick. That's a T6. Yeah, okay. So T8 body screw, T10 pivot and just like that she comes apart so this uh asp60 uh steel this was originally developed by um stora in 1975 um, and this is really what kind of kicked off the super high carbide steels um, there were a few versions of high carbide steels before this but you know what research i could do and what i could find uh, this was definitely one of the pioneers of the high carbide steel and just to put it into perspective this steel should be somewhere between rex 21 uh, rex 121 and um, maximet as far as edge retention and that sort of stuff goes uh, we can see the construction here we're just going to fully disassemble this guy you can see we're riding on double row ceramic bearings, which is awesome. We've got a D-shaped pivot, which I love to see. Okay. And we've got our bearings here. Riding on hardened steel washers. So you can see there's a fair amount of weight relieving uh, going on inside the scales here. Let's set this down. You can see we've got the same... same uh, pocketing going on on the lock side even on the lock bar itself which is very cool so we only have oh the, the other small screw i saw was for the lock bar insert so we only have that one screw so we got hidden hardware on the pocket clip which is awesome right on okay so this asp60 steel uh what we're looking at on this guy uh, so this is one of the original powder metallurgy steels, which is super cool. Like I said, dates back to 1975. Uh, a bunch of manufacturers have made this steel over the years. Uh, like I said, it started with Stora and then went to Aerosteel as well as Bowler Udelholm. And then Asab, which is a Swedish company, uh, is, is the one that, it, that made the steel for this. And you can see right there. ASP 60 awesome awesome steel so what makes this steel so interesting is that it has 6.5 percent vanadium which is very high we have 10.5 percent cobalt on this blade and then uh, it's 2.3 percent carbon like maximet has like 2.1 percent uh only four and a quarter percent chromium so this is definitely not a stainless steel and then this particular blade here has got 6.5% tungsten and 7% molybdenum. Total carbide content of this particular steel right here 
um, is going to be somewhere around 21 and a half to 22 total carbide percentage. And just to put that into perspective, Maximet is like 16 to 17 range total carbide. So this is a high performing steel for sure. Not going to be the toughest thing in the world. Um, and the other side of that Rex 20, uh, Rex 121, which is kind of the pinnacle, uh, that thing's going to be like 26, 27 percent total carbide. So this thing here at 21 to 22 percent total carbide is a beast. Uh, and Rockwell hardness should be somewhere between 68 to 72. Uh, hopefully this one is extremely hard because, like I said, I'm definitely uh, going to do some testing on this old girl. But these high performing steels like this one right here, I love to see, um, you know, it's kind of one of the things that I really enjoy about the, the knife uh, community or, or the knife world, if you will, um, you know, dealing with all the different steels and seeing how they perform and all that good stuff. I really enjoy that. I know some guys don't care about that stuff and that's totally fine. Um, but for me, I love the performance of it. So this thing here should be uh, an extreme performing blade. You know, like I said, somewhere between Rex 20, I keep wanting to say Rex 21, Rex 121 and Maximet. Uh, so definitely, you know, we're getting into kind of, you know, kind of the pinnacle really for when it comes to knife steels. You know, really the only other thing out there would be tungsten carbide, like on the Sandrine knives. Um, and that's just a different thing altogether. Uh, you know, it's not even really technically a steel. Um, so when it comes to actual steel, this is about as good as it gets. Uh, real quick, this is the new uh, salve that I myself am making. And we will... I'll be talking more about that in days to come. I've still got a few things I've got to get nailed down before I uh, put it up on the website. Uh, just to let you guys know, it, it definitely will go up on the website here at some point. Um, it's going to be a little bit before that happens. I've got to get enough of it made. Uh, right now, I have, I have it only in small quantities. Um, I did a lot of testing before getting to this point even, but I have been talking about it a little bit here over the last, uh, I don't know, week or so. And, you know, just, just, uh, yeah, I felt like it was at a place where I could finally talk about it. And I've got these, uh, really tiny applicators. That's another thing we're trying to get worked out here is the, the packaging and all that good stuff with, uh, I just got back from the Pacific Northwest a few days ago and I was out there with Zach and, and several other guys, you know, we had the meetup deal going on at Benchmade, which was a ton of fun, really enjoyed that. Um, and thanks so much to all the people that came out. It was uh, super cool. Got to meet several guys that, uh, that I had never met in person before. And so that was a lot of fun. And, you know, we also got to hang out at Benchmade for a little while, which was a good time. Always a good, good time hanging out at the Benchmade store. It also can be dangerous, uh, you know, to the wallet and whatnot going and doing that because there's just so many good things there. But, uh, you know, you got you to have fun when you're traveling, right? Now, this particular knife uh, does have a... Uh, detent ramp which is awesome to see all right what I do with the bearings so like I said really looking forward to checking out you know how well this blade is going to perform definitely uh, excited to get my hands on a new steel and so when I saw that this max ace was coming with ASP 60 and that like I said is not a steel that I have ever handled before but it's one that's been around for a long time so it's kind of interesting that you know before this time 
or at least I couldn't find any other knives that were made with ASP60. I did a little research trying to find, you know, another model that came in this steel. I'm sure there has been something over the years. I just wasn't able to find it. Um, and yeah, it would have been, would have been cool to find something else, but you know, this steel is not going to be the greatest thing in the world for sharpening. Um, you know, Rex 121 Maximet is not the most fun thing in the world to deal with when you're sharpening, but I am interested to see how this feels on a set of stones. So I will definitely, you know, report back and let you know how that goes. Okay. Hopefully. I don't know if I got the, yeah, I don't, that's my problem right there. I don't have that D shape. There it is. Okay. I didn't have the D shape lined up perfectly. That's going to be more better. All right. Let's get this lube worked in there a bit. I think it's probably a touch too tight on the old pivot there. Maybe a lot too tight. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, she feels great. It's perfectly centered. Detent is perfect. Oh, yeah. I don't think I can fail it if I want to. No. Nope. Trying to just push until it breaks. Yeah. Yep, I don't think you're failing that detent. So, that thing is dialed in perfectly. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm definitely excited about this. Now, this knife, uh, you know, is just how it is out of the factory. I didn't, uh, haven't put any, uh, anything on it yet as far as uh, stropping or anything. You'd think I could cut paper, but maybe not. Yeah, it's definitely sharp. Trying to see if it's got any. Yeah, it's pretty good right out of the box. That's a pretty good edge. Can't feel any rough spots in it. Um, so yeah, there we go. Right on. So what do you guys think of the killer whale? Uh, leave some comments below. You know, are you excited to check out uh, a new steel like ASP 60? Um, like I said, it's, it, it's one of the things that I really love about the knife uh, industry. And one of the reasons that, you know, kind of spider coes are kind of near and dear to my heart just because uh, they experiment with so many different steels. And I really enjoy that. Um, but the killer whale here coming from Max Ace, Max Ace does a really good job. You know, this is a, an overseas manufacturer. These are coming from China. Uh, but they're a high quality manufacturer and, you know, a lot of times offer some pretty good value. So, you know, retail price on this thing, I think it's around 250, 260, somewhere like that. Um, if you're interested in picking one of these up, uh, you could hit me up in the comments, uh, or I'm sorry, email me OCD for EDC, uh, info at OCD for EDC.com. Um, and we can get one of these for you. I do have access to them. I think they're sold out at most. I, well, there's only a few places that sell Max Ace, um, but I do have an outlet where I can pick some of these up. I don't currently have any in stock, uh, but I am more than happy to order one if you want to pick one up for yourself. Uh, you know, it is a big old boy, but it is super comfortable in hand. And like I said, uh, the ASP 60 blade steel should be 
you know, performance wise, as far as edge retention is concerned, should be somewhere between Rex 121 and Maximet. And if you know anything about those two steels, you know that we're talking top of the heap when it comes to edge retention. And so this thing should not disappoint. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. But I'll definitely keep you guys posted on how the testing goes on this old grill right here. And, you know, if this thing is uh, rock weld up around, you know, if it's heat treated up to, you know, sev between 70 and 72 HRC, this thing's going to be a beast. And, you know, that'll be even at 68 HRC, let's be honest, with a carbide content somewhere between 21 and 22 percent, it's going to be an edge retention beast. So that's pretty awesome. And I dig it. So hopefully you guys do too. Anyway, there you go. There's the look at the Max Ace Killer Whale. Anyway, hope to see you next time. Peace.